We are back at the garage. We're chugging along with the all-wheel drive stuff and I'm gonna be doing a short video series, uh, probably just a one-part series actually on the all-wheel drive subframe bracket um, fabrication. It's gonna be a quick little video spread out over a couple of days of footage of basically some rapid prototyping to create some sheet metal brackets for the all-wheel drive subframe to mount onto the front-wheel drive 850 uh, chassis. So let's get to it. Briefly showed the brackets in I think the last video. Basically, these brackets need to be welded onto, these two brackets need to be welded onto the 850 chassis in order to mount the subframe. You can see we got these three bolt points right here. So the 850 and the all-wheel drive stuff actually share this middle bolt point. This is where the front-wheel drive uh, spring perch goes, and these two need to be welded on. So basically, you have an option to either cut these brackets off, you know, make a jig to align it to this bolt point for each of them, cut these off and weld them on, or create your own brackets. Unfortunately, you can't buy these brackets new from Volvo anymore. You can, however, buy the viscous coupler bracket right here, new from Volvo, as well as the piece that you weld on the inside that this actually bolts to, and the gas tank also bolts to points here. There's two straps there. I elected to actually create my own brackets, so I'm gonna be showing a little bit about how we're doing that, how I'm designing it in CAD, and how I'm 3D printing the prototypes. And then I'm gonna get either water jet cut or laser jet cut. And then basically we fold those, weld them, uh, use our jig that we're gonna create on, uh, based off of this chassis and weld it onto the other chassis. So let's get to it and measure some stuff up and we can start throwing some stuff together in CAD. Shares these four bolt points here. This is where the Delta Link bolts up to on the front wheel drive model. Let's see if we can get it. Up, oh, yeah, you can see up there is where it bolts to. Let me get a better angle. Yeah, you can see that big bolt, and then you got the three over here. Those bolt up to the front trailing arms. So you can see we got the three here, and we got the one big one here. So that's all common. So that's no problem. We don't have to do anything with that. That area just bolts in, and we just have to fabricate these brackets, and obviously weld in the uh, viscous coupler mount, like I said earlier. Okay, so the first thing to do when working on our P80 all-wheel drive brackets was to basically create a 3D printed prototype, um, which then we could eventually get laser cut or water jet cut and you know stainless steel or some sort of other thin sheet metal and then bend ourselves. So I hopped into Fusion 360 and basically created a sketch uh, after taking these measurements of everything I wanted. And you can see I sketched everything flat um, where we'll later you know create sheet metal flanges and then actually make the bends. So once we get our sketch, we can go out over here, and I've already done this, so I'm just going to be unsuppressing these features and create our sheet metal flange. And basically, this is just a, a flat representation of all the different profiles. Um, and, you know, you pick the sheet metal type. In this case, we're doing a 1 tenth inch, which is about 12 gauge stainless steel. And you can pick which side you want the thickness to be on. In this case, I want the thickness to be going down. And then you can see once we have our, our flange, you can see we have all these different lines where we can actually make our bends on the sheet metal. So if we go ahead and unsuppress this one, we can see our sheet metal actually folds up. So we can hop into here, edit feature, and you can see we have our four different bend lines for our four different corners. And you can see we have two 90s and two 45s. And so now we got a 3D bracket and everything. Everything's looking good. Basically to 3D print this, we want to unfold this piece. So here you can see we can unfold it like that. And then we can go over to tools here. We can turn it into an STL file. And I already had one I printed earlier, but we can save it like that. And the rear is pretty much, or the front bracket is pretty much exactly the same. Here you can see we got our sketch, our sketch down here. Let me turn off the bodies. We get our sketch here, and then we basically create a flange and then make our bends again. And then it's the same process for exporting as an STL. So now that we have everything exported as an STL, I hopped over into Ultimate Cure and basically imported everything. I have a Creality cr 10 s 5 so it already comes with a bed template and everything. Um, and basically, I just laid everything out flat. And I decided to just print this as a 100% infill because it is a very short print time. and doesn't use a lot of material and I wanted it to be um, solid because I'm going to be using heat to actually make bends on these lines as if it were, you know, sheet metal. 
and then basically save that as a file, put it on my SD card, and then transfer that over to that over to the printer. All right, so I got the file on the SD card and the printer. We got the bed heated up to 60, the print head heated up, heated up to 200. And basically right now I'm just running through an auto uh, leveling sequence. Basically using a BL Touch 3, it basically probes a whole bunch of different areas on the bed, creates a 3D mesh so that it'll adjust the Z axis based upon where it is on the X, Y so that it's always printing nice and level. So once this completes, we'll go ahead and start the print, and uh, this is going to take about three or four hours. And then after this is done, we can pull these off and bend them uh, with the with a heat gun, and then we'll have some print a 3D printed prototype brackets that we can use for mock-up on the subframe. We've got the brackets printing right now. We're about 0.6 millimeter layer height, 20% done. Let's go. More hours and we can peel these off and get them uh, bent with the heat gun. I'll show you how that works, and then we can run to the garage and test fit everything up. Great piece of equipment for uh, rapid prototyping. All right, so I got the prototype brackets all done 3D printing. I'm gonna pop these off, and then we'll head over to the. Uh, my solder rework station where I got a heat gun where we can basically heat these edges and bend them into shape so that way we can uh, test uh, mock-up fitment and everything. So basically just gonna hit it with the heat gun real quick. We'll see if I can do this with one hand. But uh, we're gonna heat these edges up a little bit. Should be able to do this with one hand. And basically, need a little bit more heat, but you get the idea. Should be good. Basically, bend those over, and then we can use that edge there to make sure that it's at a perfect ninety-degree angle. And we'll let that cool down for a second and we can get all of these uh, bent up, and then we can head over to the garage and test fit them. This bracket's gonna weld onto the chassis just like that, you know, both sides on this side, and you can see there, I got them pretty, pretty close to the same size. We can actually fit this one over this one, you know. Obviously, this bracket's not gonna fit over this one because this bracket's gonna completely replace this one on the front wheel drive model, but we can use that to make sure that the bolt holes actually line up. So you can see that they're actually offset a little bit this way and the bolt just goes right in like that. So that's all perfect alignment and everything. And I'm just gonna weld a nut on the inside of this so that the bolt actually can go into it. Um, this one basically just has kind of the same concept, a little cylinder welded to it that's tapped. So this is the rear bracket. Um, I'm gonna be selling these brackets as a kit. And then obviously I'm gonna be creating a 3D printed jig that will basically bolt up to here. And then you bolt the two brackets, the rear and the front to the jig, and it'll basically align these up perfectly to the chassis. We also got our front bracket. So you can see that's gonna bolt up just like that, you know, bolt up just like that. And this bolt hole is also a little offset, so Obviously I can't fit this one over, but this one does line up and everything. So we're gonna get that done. Um, hopefully gonna get these laser jet, or laser cut or water jet cut uh, soon. And then I'll have to bend those and weld them myself, weld on some nuts, and then we can use our jig to get those all lined up on the front wheel drive model. Here you can see the brackets actually on the subframe. That one goes there. You can see we got plenty of clearance. Nothing's hitting, and then this one goes here through like that and you can see that all fits up nice and well and obviously this has to be duplicated on the other side but we could just use this common bolt pointing and we don't actually have to run anything this way to get that you know get the other side lined up so we're gonna hopefully get these off to fabrication soon get them cut out of probably three or four stainless steel hopefully get this done next week or the week after and then we'll have brackets and hopefully I'll be able to provide, you know, if I sell these, I'll be able to provide the brackets and also a 3D printed jig that you can use to line everything up so you don't have to like 
make your own jig or, or weld a bunch of metal together to jig it up. You can just use an easily 3D print racket. If you have a 3D printer and if you don't, probably provide one for whoever buys these. Okay, so earlier I talked about a 3D printable jig and this is it. So basically, like I said, the center bolt point is what is shared on the all-wheel drive and front-wheel drive models. So basically what happens is this jig bolts up to the center and then you'll bolt uh, your brackets to this jig and then you'll basically have them positioned where you need to weld them. And so let's say these were, you know, the sheet metal brackets, these weren't original, these weren't welded on. You know, I bolt this up to my brackets, these guys. And then basically that'll put them in the proper place to be welded and then I can tack them, take the jig off and put the subframe up and double check fitment and everything. So, you know, if I do sell these brackets as a kit, I'll probably include something like this or an STL file that you guys can print or some sort of, you know, printable, either, you know, maybe paper printable template or something like that. But yeah, it's going to be it for this video. Um, that's my ideas for the brackets. I already got in contact with a company local to me to get these uh, water jet cut. So hopefully I'll get these done by the end of this week or maybe early next week and I can get those folded up, weld it, and start, you know, mocking everything up. So here you can see, you know, the jig would basically bolt to this bracket and then that would get welded on. So that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed seeing a little bit, you know, something a little bit different with 3D printing and CAD and everything. And I'll talk to you guys later.